Today's episode of the Goldcast is sponsored by the anticipation and finality of the 2018 NBA season. I cannot wait for this to be over now that the All-Star break is done. We can just get on with it. Let's make it happen. But before we get started, Raymond, why don't you let them know, where can they find us? You can find us on Facebook.com slash The Goldcast. You can also follow us on Twitter at The Goldcast underscore. And you can follow us on Instagram at The Goldcast. You can also subscribe to us via iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher, all under the same moniker of The Goldcast. Like, subscribe, comment. We love to hear from you. And we do our best to reply back. All right, pretty big episode coming up right here. First, we're going to talk some Niners. Then we're going to talk some Warriors. But first, the Goldcast intro. Let's get busy. San Francisco, are you ready? ready? This is the Goldcast. Boom! Welcome to another edition of the Gold Cast. We are the voice of the Bay. I'm your host, Rudy Salisa III, and with me is my brother, my co-host. Raymond Salisa first, baby. Boom. Boom, boom, Who'd boom, you boom. expect? Who'd you expect? We missed you. Well, wait, how's it? Damn it. Never mind. It's over. It's too late. <laughs> All right, so here we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Talk about a bomb. We'll edit that out. No, we're not. So here we go, Raymond. Press conference on Friday, Kyle Shanahan was asked with Garoppolo in in place for 2018 whether the 49ers should be expected to make the playoffs, to which Kyle Shanahan said, no, absolutely not. There is no quick answer for anybody. All the favorites very rarely win it, and sometimes people think those that aren't going to win anything surprise the heck out of everybody. This league is so balanced, so competitive. It is so hard to win in this league that you never go into a year saying, all right, we're good. We're in the playoffs. You have to earn everything you get. And if you think anything if you think anything differently, you'll be humbled and embarrassed very quickly in this league. That's why I'm ready to work. Ooh. Wow. That's some good words. Yep. So, Raymond, I want to start off with you. I want to hear your thoughts. What are your thoughts on what Kyle Shanahan said? Do you think... The 49ers should not be expected to go back to the playoffs. Let us know. I actually agree with him because, okay, there's two things he's doing here. One, he's he's obviously adhering to the principles he's been voicing in the locker room. But at the same time, he's also playing some reverse psychology because why would you get cocky before the season? season's even started you haven't done anything you won five games in a row you ended six and ten everybody else and pundits and fans think we're going to the playoffs based on that momentum that we built last year but he's right realistically it's not guaranteed you know we we're gonna bring back most if not all of the same squad from last year minus you know a handful of pieces that just didn't work out um aaron lynch i'm looking at you primarily um but At the same time, Dante Johnson, to be honest. But uh, aside from that, you know, this is not something... I mean, I expect them to be into the mix because I think they're going to be that good. And we'll obviously get into more detail about that as we get further into the offseason and into, you know, post-draft and all that. Because that's all obviously going to change the course of the trajectory for all 32 NFL teams once we get done with that in uh, April. But at the same time... um, I feel like Kyle Shanahan, like, even though Jim Harbaugh had some of this in him, he was very humble. You know, he never talked smack about the other teams. He was not a big, you know, shit talker per se. And everyone else was pretty, pretty much on the same par. Everyone like, oh, they do this well. They do that well. Um, The same, the Warriors are actually the same way when they talk about other teams that they face. They're not cocky. You know, they, they might seem that way on the court when they start to blow you out, but they don't, they're certainly not. They don't speak that way in post or pre or post game interviews. And the Niners are the same way under the Kyle Shanahan regime. And Kyle Shanahan is similar in the Jim Harbaugh era where Harbaugh is very always humble and complimentary towards every team that they played because it was always about, always about respect and the NFL is on a different level. It's not college where even the best college team could not beat the worst NFL team because the, the disparity is just too strong. 
So what Kyle Shanahan is basically saying is like, hey, this league is is unique to the other three major sports, whereas any team, regardless of how good or bad you are, can beat another team because the professional prowess of each NFL team is so good. It's so elite. It's so precise and surgical in its execution and technique that if you go into a game overconfident, you'll fall flat you'll fall flat on your face, regardless of how good you've been playing up to that point. Just ask the Houston Texans. Just ask the Jacksonville Jaguars. Just ask the Rams. Although, you know, to be fair, they set out most of their starters. But at the same time, we won all three of those games. All three playoff-bound teams, all three of them did not make it into the playoffs or didn't make it far into the playoffs. But we beat all three of them. When they still had, it's not like, obviously we weren't playing for anything, but they were playing for something, which means that they had more motivation to beat us than us to beat them. And we still won, even in that regard. But I'm going off the rails here. But, you know, to 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 circle back to what I was saying, I agree with Kyle Shanahan. He's absolutely 100 percent right. I think part of him is playing reverse psychology and the other part of him is playing the, the principal game that he's been preaching ever since he got into the building. And you can't fault the man for that. And I I would be hard pressed if, if you have another argument to present to me, you know, let us know in the comments, because uh, I just don't see it. You know, I to, to be honest, Kyle Shanahan has has been just as good as John Lynch in his role, despite what the record might suggest, despite the one in 10 start. That's how I feel about it. I don't know how you feel about it, brother, but you know, I'm open to all ears. Well, hmm. it's hard not to get excited when you see a quarterback go five and zero with the kind of technical ability that Jimmy Garoppolo Agreed. has. It's Agreed. hard not to be excited when you see him dice up the Jacksonville Jaguars who were easily you know statistically and just truthfully one of the best defenses from last year a team that came very very close to defeating the patriots and and pretty much you yeah. know got their a their defense bit of, played the patriots yeah. better than the eagles did better than the eagles did and just if it wasn't for that putrid offense they probably would have gone they probably would have defeated him so it's hard not to see these things and think wow you know this you know we, we've we've got a shot here but I think you're right. There's still a lot of holes, and there's a lot of holes to be filled. There's still a lot of pieces that need to be corrected on this team. And I think tempering expectations is smart. You and I have been fans for a really long time, our whole lives. We've watched great 49er teams. We've watched horrific 49er teams. And I think it's just really good to temper expectations. Here's what we do. Here's what I, here's, here's what I propose. Goldcast Nation, 49er Faithful. What we do is we we just temper our expectations. People ask how we're doing. Eh, we're okay. We'll be okay. We'll see. And then we just let the players we let the players do the talking on the field, because you know the second we start talking about going back to the NFC West, first place position, taking the throne, blah 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 blah. Hey, I've been guilty of it many times. But maybe we need to look at the leader of our team, Kyle Shanahan, the leader of the amazing, the best franchise ever, the 49ers. And we just take a page out of his book and, and we all just, we temper expectations for a little while. We just temper it. As, 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 as collectively, as a city, we just temper the expectations, baby. Yeah. And was stay it humble, ass? stay focused. Mm. Yep. Mm. Mm. We'll see. We'll see. That's what we say, right? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. And that's, that's my take on it. So, Raymond, it's over. The All-Star Game has officially ended in the middle of this recording, actually. It officially ended. We're taping this on a Sunday night around 8.30 p.m. And it is done. Team LeBron has come back to defeat Team Steph. Very close game. Very exciting game. I enjoyed the mix matchings of the teams, and I thought that really worked. But we're not really here to discuss the All-Star Game. We're here to discuss the fact that the NBA is now heading into the final stretch of the season. We've seen a Warriors team that has looked bored. That's what a lot of people have, a lot of critics have said. The Warriors have looked very bored this year. We saw a team that was allowed to coach themselves uh, earlier in the week, and that was very controversial for people. I really could care less. I, who cares? You know, it's dog days of basketball. Who cares? I want to know, what do you expect going forward? It's a tight race in the West. Where do you see the the Warriors landing and 
are we still the favorites to go back to the finals? I still think we are. Um, I think the, you know, the Warriors, we've seen this the last, what, three years now, where the Warriors get complacent, they get sloppy, you know, they've had turnover problems off and on all throughout this three-year finals reign, you know, going on a potential fourth. I still think they're the favorites to beat, you know, despite the fact that, you know, the Blazers got the best of them for the first time in like, what, who knows, 10 different times, the, the first time the Houston Rockets have won a season series in I don't know how many seasons now. Um, other than before that, they'd lost like 10 straight. So, you know, j- just because there's a little shift shift in the uh, in the fight from the other teams, it's because, you know, I, I think it's to, it's good to be fair. Like, hey, some other teams are starting to catch up. They realize like, hey, you can't play the normal style of basketball because the Warriors have reinvented the whole expectation of how you're supposed to play, you know, now it's played inside the paint, outside the paint, beyond the arc, tough defense, as well as offense. You can't just go the full Don Nelson style and expect to win. He never won a ring as a coach, you know, because he didn't believe in defense. And that was his big problem. Uh, the same can be said for uh, Mike D'Antoni, who finally starting to embrace defense and guess what hey your rockets actually look formidable for the first time you know i still don't think it's good enough to win four games in a seven game series over the warriors i think now they're good enough to win in about two games that's what i th- that's what i think so and as far and you know the blazers are still probably a first round playoff team just because that's it all they are is they're damon lillard and cj mccollum and that's it you know those guys put up 70 points that'll be one game which means they can beat the Warriors at least once, and then they've they're gonna run out of gas because the Warriors play 14 players. So, good luck playing, you know, three three different squads against your one and a half. So, who that's the biggest who that's the biggest who pose, issue I see. So let me ask you this: Who poses the biggest threat to the Golden State Warriors in the postseason? Is it the is it the Rockets? Or is it OKC? I think it's the Rockets, but what do you think? Probably the Rockets, you know, but I mean, that's not saying much because I just said that they're good enough to win two games in a in a seven game series, you know, and that's a big if, you know, they they got swept last time and the year before that they won one game. So that's that's eight, eight and one uh, against the Warriors or I'm sorry, one and eight against the Warriors if you're a Houston Rockets fan. So that means that the odds don't favor you. And just because you're playing defense now doesn't necessarily mean you're going to outduel the Warriors and something that they pioneered, you know, within the last five years, you know, three or well, I'd say four years, you know. But you could say that some of that stuff was already starting to take shape under Mark Jackson and then really got refined and legitimized under Steve Kerr. So, But still, you're going to try to beat the Warriors at their own game that they've been playing for the last you know, four or five years? Good luck. Good luck. You just, did, you just decided to do that this year. So I just don't see them. I mean, that's, it. that's just it. They're good enough to win one or two games. Boom. There it is. Okay, let me ask you this. The Cavs keep rolling. Last we checked in, they had the big trade changes. The Cavs keep rolling. Do you think now, after a couple te- te- couple weeks of this new look Cavs, do you consider them the heavy favorites, or does Boston still have a hold of the first spot in the East, and is Boston still the favorite? Because Boston, for me, was the favorite before the trade deadline, and they've had, you know, they're going through like a slump, and that happens to teams in the NBA. This isn't uncommon. This isn't the first time that a team has gone through something like this. But do you think they are still the favorites to get to the NBA Finals? Well, they were my favorites. I don't know if they ever were your favorites, but do you think they have a shot, or does this new look Cavs are they now back to? You know, is, you should we just give them the throne now? Are they just the one? No, I think they're. You know, I'm I'm actually surprised at how well they've come together because I thought that was going to be the big glaring issue. You get rid of six players and you bring in six new players. You know, the fact that they've been able to gel that fast, um, I think, is probably indicative of the youth that they've got. They've got young players that are 
clearly have got some fight and some grit in them. So, you know, a little bit of moxie here and there. So, and they've exhibited that within this stretch here towards the all-star game. The all-star game is literally ending as we, as we record, but you know, I think, um, I don't think it necessarily changes anything because once you get to the big show, then not only are you playing the best teams in the association, but you're pay- playing them over a stretch of seven games. You've got to win four every single time in order to advance. So that'll be new territory for that entire squad, with the exception of LeBron James, J.R. Smith, Tristan Thompson. But other than that, you know, you're, you're you've got a lot of guys that are in uncharted waters, and so that'll be a true test. If LeBron can guide them through that, then not, that obviously says a lot about LeBron more than it does the young guys and, and his leadership skills because he's obviously going he, he's he's half GM over there. But if it doesn't happen, which is what I'm picking on, then I think it it proves to be you know better luck next year, and that's if LeBron even stays in Cleveland, you know so. You still have Boston to worry about. I mean, Toronto has taken over in the Eastern Conference, so that they're ahead of Boston right now. By but do by we believe games. in Toronto? Do we actually? Does does anyone believe in Toronto? No, I, don't. I mean it, it's. I mean it's just something someone else to think about. You know, it's it's someone else to think about. You got Demar Rosen over there, Kyle Lowry. You know, those are their two best players. Serge Ibaka. You know, the the stout veteran. But uh, I don't expect a whole lot out of them you know, and to go deep, you know, Kyle Lowry's not that kind of guy who can take over a game DeMar DeRozan a little bit more. So, but, uh, I don't, I don't see them, you know, going deep, maybe round two depends who they play first round, depends how it all ends in the seedings. So, but, uh, but as it stands right now, just another, another team to think about, you know, another team to think about who knows they might uh, Cleveland's still six and a half back. They're in third place. You know, Toronto's got 41 wins. Boston's up at 40. Cleveland's got 34 wins. You know they've been, they've won four in a row. They're seven and three in their last ten. So sure, that's something to be said. They're still terrible on the road. You know, under 500. They're decent at home now. You know, some uh, some of that comes from the four game stretch that they've won here. But you know, it's nothing to. Oh my God, they're reinvigorated. You know, it's. I would be if I was the Warriors, I would just focus on getting the number one seed back, because he, the Rockets have won ten in a row, and they win. They own the tiebreaker. So you need to beat you need to get back on the track in that regard because home field advantage in Oracle Arena is huge. Huge, huge, huge. One hundred percent. And actually I'm pretty confident that's exactly where Kerr is gonna keep them. Keep them focused on winning one game at a time, keep them focused on trying to get that first place seed, keep them focused on just starting to get ramped towards the playoffs. And I believe they are gonna get ramped. I really do. Yeah, I totally agree, too. I, Kerr has proven time and time again he's a great coach. He's a very innovative coach. He comes from a long lineage of successful you know, teammates and coaches that he's been around. So he's just a, an encyclopedia of successful principles that he's just, you know, melding into his own, you know, his own brand of that and, you know, passing it off to the Warriors players. So, you know, it's just a matter of time. You know, the, the all-star break is much needed you know, for them, especially the core guys who have been to three straight finals, you know, that's, that's a lot of wear and tear. I mean, LeBron's been to eight straight. So ridiculous. And thankfully he's lost five. So hopefully he'll continue to lose as he continues to go up against that, our team. So, but, uh, I think for the Warriors case, it's really important that they win this year's finals to really solidify themselves as a genuine dynasty, because you cannot be a dynasty if unless you win at least three within, you know, a short, short stretch of time, you know, and it varies from sport to sport, you know, but it's all about consistency. You can't go to, you know, sure, they could have they should have won the year that they won 79, but, you know, they blew it. So a hard lesson learned. So but they won two out of three, but you got to win that third one. Otherwise, it doesn't count. You know, if they lose, if they go to the finals and they lose again, then guess what? You become. You become, you win two, you lose two, and you know, then you become as shitty as the Heat. And who gives a shit about them? They're not a dynasty. <laughs> uh, they're not a dynasty. <laughs> they're not, and they That's don't. True. They don't. They're not Ooh. talked about in the same vein because of that. No, in fact, everyone kind of forgot about them because LeBron leaves, they tank, and then LeBron goes and does the same exact thing with the next team. Yeah, so it feels like it was really about him. I definitely agree 
I definitely. I wanted to ask you, because this has been in the media lately, let's circle back to the Niners, because it wouldn't be a gold cast if we didn't constantly circle back to the Niners. What do you think about Joe Montana being thrusted back into the conversation of the GOAT because of this Super Bowl loss? Well, first of all, Joe Montana has never lost. Tom Brady has. It took Tom Brady, what, seven tries to beat Joe Montana? So it took him six tries just to tie Joe Montana. So, and should Joe Montana won four in a shorter span of time, and he never lost in that span of four. And he won those games decisively, you know, either by him making a clutch pass and a clutch drive down the stretch and two of those wins, and then the other two just dominating Dan Marino and John Elway. You know, he, he played superb. Each time he went up against a quarterback in those Super Bowls, all, I think, three out of the four quarterbacks he played. I'm not sure John Elway won MVP that year, but the other three players did win MVP uh, yeah. the year that he played them. So stiffer competition, stiffer rules, you know, a, a more balanced league in terms of, you know, what what defenses were allowed to do to offensive players, you know, even quarterbacks. So considering all of that, it's and and most importantly, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that Tom Brady lost again and so now loses three. So that to me kind of helps solidify the argument of like, okay, Joe comes back into the conference. Had he won, then he would, you know, he'd stay out of the circle and he'd get further get pushed further away from the circle. But now, now that he has lost, Joe comes back into the circle and in my opinion gets front and center right into the circle because because of everything I just stated. So you can't go you can't do what Tom did and then expect to be number 1. You know, sure, you've got more rings than Joe, but Joe was absolutely perfect every time he was given an opportunity to play on that stage. And Tom Brady was anything but. Well, you know, the hard part I have with this is that for years I've always held the four rings over everyone's heads as being the marker. So it's tough for me to then go give it back to Joe when Tom now has five, like just based on my own personal criteria. Having said that, the part that I really wrestle with is just the controversy that constantly surrounded that team. You know, for instance, the, you know, Chris Long, is on the Eagles this year, and the Eagles held a fake practice on Friday. You know, Chris Long was with the Patriots last year. So they hold this fake practice on Friday, and they do it because they're just not sure who's watching. Now, here's what I find weird. Chris Long was on that team from the Patriots the year before. If there wasn't any modicum of truth to possibly someone watching what they're doing, wouldn't Chris Long go, hey, guys, this is a complete waste of time. Like, the, we, the team doesn't do this at all. Like, you guys really are think overthinking this. Don't you think Chris Long would say something? Or, or, on the flip side, why does the Eagles think that this is something they need to do when they have a Patriots player on their team? Did, because did it's, Chris because Long it was, say something because it was, it's, it's common knowledge that they were recording defenses dating all the way back to their first three Super Bowls. That's why there's an asterisk next to those three Super Bowls. Not literally an asterisk, but in my book, there is. You know, there's only two Super Bowls that this team legitimately won. And they didn't necessarily win it in convincing fashion. They won it because the other team just fucked up and didn't, you know, Seattle didn't give the ball to Marshawn when they were on the one yard line. Atlanta couldn't hold, you know, decide to play prevent defense and let Tom Brady come back, you know, in the fourth quarter. So, after dominated him the entire time. Yeah, so that's the only thing. There's always this controversy around the Patriots that wasn't around the 49ers, wasn't around the Steelers. There's always just this, there's just kind of looking over your shoulder and there's just this cloud of controversy that's always followed that team. And I think that's why it's really hard for me to just concede it. I also think that's deep down, that's where a lot of like the national hate for the Patriots comes from. Is that, you know, and I get it. I mean, even, you know, I remember talking to older 49er fans and them saying, you know, 
uh, the people people hated the Niners by 95. They hated them. They just wanted to see them go down. But I think there's a level of respect there. Yeah, but there was never any that was controversy different. behind the hate. It was just straight up hate because they're jealous because their team wasn't winning or their team wasn't in the mix or they were yeah. tired of you know the domination. Exactly. Exactly. But I think that's one of the reasons there's such a like a fervor around the hate is because it's just you just can't say with for a fact that the team won cleanly and I every team did it whatever I don't give a shit about that the point is the Super Bowl champions got caught doing it so I don't give a shit what anyone else did the Super Bowl champions got caught all right and so and they're the ones that seem to be just so much better you know so I don't you know whether or not whether or not every other team was doing it it's hard to say because they just were so much better and so dominant. And so, you know, it's like we go, well, you know, if everyone else's team's doing it, how come you're so much better at it? You know, so I don't know. Just food for thought. I love how we, we end always on a, on a Niner segment. But uh, Raymond, before we get out of here, why don't you let them know? Where can they find you? You can find me at twitter.com at Ray Solis. You can also follow me on Instagram at Ray Solis 1. Boom. You can find me on Instagram at Rudy Solis 3, number 3. And you can find me on Twitter at Rudy Solis 3 RD, Rudy Solis 3rd. So concludes another edition of the Gold Cast. We are the voice of the Bay. I'm your host, Rudy Solis 3rd. And with me is my brother, my co host, Raymond Salisa first, baby. Boom. We'll see you next time. Same gold cast time. Same gold cast channel. This is, is the gold cast.